starting now. All right. So now we will discuss the chapter. Uh, we are discussing the topic that is related to how do you treat infectious diseases. And in that, we will talk about antibiotics. Okay. I tell you what, antibiotics, as we will dig into it, okay, as the name suggests, it is killing up the bacteria. It is against bacteria. So when we'll dig into it, so you'll get to know that we have so many ways to either stop bacterial growth or to kill the bacteria. All right. So uh, today the topic, which is on antibiotics, okay, today we will talk how do we inhibit bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. All right. Because I tell you in the bacteria, if you remember, it's a structure. So it has a cell wall made up of peptidoglycan, right? So today we are going to study how do we diminish biosynthesis of that peptidoglycan cell wall, all right? Because you see, if the cell wall won't be there, then obviously uh, the bacteria will die. The bacteria will undergo lysis, right? All right, so let's study about it. So the medicines that we are going to talk about are very famous medicines, okay, which we use like very frequently, very frequently they are prescribed in Pakistan. So these are penicillin, cephalosporin, and amoxicillin. By the way, I must say one thing here that I was reading an article and it said that by 2050, uh, there will be more deaths of uh, because of antibiotic resistance as compared to other diseases as compared to cancer right so just imagine that even more than cancer people are dying because of antibiotic resistance so antibiotic resistance is developed when bacteria okay they get uh, they get used to okay they get immune to the antibiotic that you're taking okay uh, here I would say that if you remember uh, famous soap ads huh? they say Pele ke bacteria aise aise te, abhi ke bacteria aise, and they all of a sudden they go red they go spiky right so uh, so that is antibiotic resistance you know that they're developing they are evolving right so let's study about it all right so bacterial cell wall all right so i tried to include this slide here okay and i try to make it easier for you to memorize literally memorize this thing okay so first of all if you look here on this side of the slide wait a minute uh let me get the pointer yeah i got it okay so better look here here you have two types of antibiotics okay one is bacteriostatic and the other one is bactericidal, right? So bacteriostatic antibiotics are those antibiotics which would actually, uh, you know, stop the bacteria growing, okay? Static means that they're stationary, okay? They can't just multiply anymore. However, bacteriostatal is about that bacteria is being killed, right? Okay. So here you have this mnemonic which you should actually uh, memorize, okay? That is bang, Q, rip. I don't know whose nickname this is, but you can, uh, you know, name some friend of yours as this thing. So this is beta, beta lectins, aminoglycosides, nitro, imidazole, and then glycopeptides, uh, quinolines, rifampicin, and polymyxin, right? So these are all bactericidal, right? That they would kill the bacteria. And these here are the bacteriostatic, that they would stop the bacteria from multiplying anymore. So this is miscalled, right? I don't know who that is, but still remember. So that is macrolides, sulfonamides, uh, chloram, uh, chloram phenicol, and then we have oxax uh, ox azo lidinones then we have lincosamide and then we have tetracycline right all right so today our topic when we are we are studying about that how are we attacking 
the bacterial cell wall so v would be more towards the bacterial cell effect right okay before i dig it into more the topic when we are when i'm talking about the cell wall here i want to mention one thing that if i look here at gram positive bacteria right so it has peptidoglycan, a thick peptidoglycan cell wall, okay? I'm sure in uh, microbiology, when you studied, you must have studied that uh, which one stains more and all that, right? Okay. And then we have gram-negative bacteria, right? So gram-negative bacteria has very thin peptidoglycan cell wall. And along with it, it's even covered up more with a cell membrane okay it has an outer membrane and if you remember so the cell membrane is uh is what it, it is uh choosy in letting go things in and out right however the cell wall is usually uh not that uh, you know restricting in nature anyways uh here I have attached because I would be using these sort of terminologies now very frequently, bacilli, cocci, cocci and then uh, vibro, spirilla. So I, I thought maybe you know it, but still I, uh, I, I inserted this slide, okay? So you see uh, when we talk about cocci, so here we have diplo cocci or cocci, whatever you want to say. Then you have the strepto cocci, okay? So streptococci, as I said that day in the lecture, it looks like a chain, right? So it is that that all of them are arranged in a particular manner. Then we have staphylococci. So it is arranged in the form of grapes, right? All right. And then we have uh, sarsina. So it is arranged in the form of cuboid. Okay, tetrad, tetrad is arranged in the form of square, right? Then we, when we talk about bacilli, the rod-shaped bacteria, so we have the chain of bacilli, bacilli, then we have flagellated one, right? Four former, then we have spire sheets when we talk about the, uh, these, uh, these spiral ones, right? So this is spirilla, this is vibrio, which looks like a comma, right? I, I hope that it is a quick summary uh, for you. All right. So when we will talk today, okay? So we will talk about the beta lactam ring, right? So this here, this square here, which is nitrogen here and all, okay, Car carboxyl group here, okay. So you see th this bond, okay, this, this is to be attacked. This is to be broken, right? If, uh, if, you, if the bacteria, okay, like we are talking about the penicillin, I know that you know about it, that penicillin is one of the most famous uh, antibiotics we have, right? So here in the penicillin, you have this beta lactam ring, okay? So that should be broken in order to make the penicillin stop its work, right? It means that if I have, uh, if I, I have an enzyme, that would break this bond. It means that this medicine will not work in my body, right? So I will be um, resistant to this antibiotic. Uh, before I start penicillin even more, I'm sure you all know about it, that penicillin was actually discovered uh, by a scientist uh, who was referred to as the lazy scientist, right? And why he was called lazy? Because I tell you what, he went... On, by the way, give me the name of the scientist. You, you should know the name of the scientist. Come on. Okay. Who, uh, uh, who developed a penicillin. Okay. But in the meanwhile, I'm telling you the story of this scientist. Uh, tell me the chat box. Okay. The name of the scientist. All right. So what exactly the scientist did was he went on a vacation. Okay. With the Petri dishes not washed and uh, the window of the lab were opened up. And the person went on a vacation, imagine. Uh, so when he went back, okay, he, when he came back, so at that moment, he saw that the petri dishes were not having the uh, bacterial, you know, colonies, which he 
accidentally left. So then he, when he inquired more into it, so he found out that the spores of bread from outside actually, you know, spore, the, the fungus that grows on the bread, bread okay, so the, those spores actually came into his lab, okay, and they actually killed that bacterial culture and from there he developed penicillin, right? Uh, okay, good, good, good. Yustra and Sedra, high five to you. So you guys have said Alexander Fleming and that is so correct, okay? So, uh, I, I, okay, I tell you one thing more. Before even he developed this entire, and he isolated, um, you know, the entire penicillin and everything, okay? From penicillium, okay? Penicillium is a fungus from where penicillin is uh, produced. So before he even did that, I tell you what, Egyptians, what they used to do was, for example, if somebody would have a wound, okay, on the leg or somewhere, so they would use uh, stale breads, okay, which would have fungus, okay, and uh, they would actually place that bread on the person's, you know, legs, okay, or wherever the wound is, okay, so uh, in order to uh, not have any bacterial infection over there, though it's very dangerous because this fungus would also be there, but it was a practice by, of Egyptians way before it was isolated and identified by Alexander Fleming, right? Uh, so from here, we should learn that we should always share our learnings, our education, uh, because it helps others and it's good to help community, right? Okay. So when we talk about penicillin, that how do they work? As, as I've said right now, uh, if you remember the structure here, right? So here's a four chain, uh, four cornered ring, okay? And then it is attached to the five cornered ring, right? Okay, so it is made like that, okay? Penicillin, okay? And what exactly it is doing is, if you look here, this green colored, okay? This is, by the way, this is the bacteria, okay? And we have taken out the cell wall. We have enlarged the cell wall, okay? And then we would see that you see uh, the glucose compounds, okay, they're attached in one line, okay, these two lines are the uh, glucose compounds, okay, and then they're attached and then they have the peptide, bo uh, the peptide chains here, okay, they are linked by peptide bonds, okay, and this is further made stronger by this enzyme, which is called transpeptidase right so what exactly penicillin is going to do penicillin's job is that it will attack on this tra transpeptide okay it will attack on it okay and then when this will be broken okay as a result what will happen the bacteria would break right because its cell wall would rupture right everybody so let's read about it even in more detail so when we talk about the structure and mechanism of action, so penicillin has a beta lactam ring, which I've already shown to you, required for antibacterial activity. Modification of the R group side chain alter pharmacological properties and resistance to beta uh, lactamase. Right? If you remember, I I told you all that if you want to uh, destroy this compounds so you would break it from here right okay so you have this r chain r r attach here r r is the uh r is the r is the symbolization of any group that can be attached here right okay so uh penicillins inactivate bacterial trust peptidase and prevent the cross linking of peptidoglycan polymers that is essential for bacterial cell wall integrity. Penicillins also bind to and inactivate penicillin binding proteins involved in cell wall synthesis. Uh, the action of autolysin is in the, in the presence of penicillin further weakens the cell wall, right? So you see, the action of autolysin in the presence of 
penicillin. So penicillin, because of that, autolysin is also activated, right? And this autolysin within the cell wall, it also starts to help to cleave the cell wall, right? Okay. Uh, so penicillin are bacteriocidal for growing cells, right? Because in the growing cells, when we stop the cell wall synthesis, so it won't be manufactured, right? So gram-positive bacteria with thick external cell wall are more uh, prone to it, right? Because they have the thicker one, right? Okay. So the major cause of resistance is the production of beta-lactamase, beta-lactamase, the gene for beta-lactamase can be transmitted during conjugation or as a small plasmid via transduction. Okay, I'm sure in microbiology you have already studied what is conjugation and what is transduction, right? But still I have uh, placed this uh, slide for you, okay? So what exactly they are going to do is this, that these two bacteria, okay, they would get closer to each other, okay? And then the DNA, okay, would replicate, okay? And it, the, the plasmid would actually, the, the replicated plasmid would go into the other bacteria and automatically, since this bacteria was uh, already immune to an antibiotic, so the new bacteria that is about to be produced okay it will also get uh, immune right because it will get the copy of the dna get it hmm. so the gene for beta lactamases can be transmitted okay and what is transduction transduction is that uh, the virus okay they help to uh, uh, they help to forward the DNA hmm? of the bacteria. Okay, so common organisms capable for producing penicillinase include Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas, uh, wait a minute, Irigginosa. Okay, then we have Neisseria, Gonorrhea, and Bacillus, Proteus and bacteri uh, bacteri uh, bacteroides species bacteroides bacteroides species okay so resistance may also occur because bacteria lack receptors or other pbbs are impermeable to penicillin lack cell wall or are metabolically inactive okay so this is how the resistance can develop okay what is PBP? They are the uh, proteins that would help the penicillin to attach to them, okay, and to start up their actions, okay. So their presence is also very much needed in order to start uh, the entire process. Hmm. Then we have pharmacological properties. So penicillins are absorbed rapidly after internal administration although radically and parent uh, parental administration and are distributed throughout body fluids they penetrate the uh, cerebrospinal fluid and ocular fluid to a significant extent only during inflammation so gi absorption of penicillin may be decreased in the presence of food Okay, so the selected drugs and their therapeutics. So penicillin G is mainly used to treat infections with the following organisms. Resistant strains of bacteria are being isolated more frequently. So the use uh, the uses are that they treat the gram positive cocci, gram positive rods, and gram negative uh, aerobes. Right? I'm not reading their names because. Uh, can read it okay here what i want to mention here is that if you look here you're saying that gram negative rods uh, they have no effect okay penicillin are not effective against them okay and then when we talk about anaerobes so most except uh, uh 
bacteroid spagilis. So this agent is used against oral anaerobes. Other, uh, other uh, tryponema palladium, uh, which is used to treat uh, syphilis and uh, lactospera species. So they are common pathogens for first generation penicillins are used today. Penicillin uh, V, an oral form of penicillin G with poor bioavailability, has a narrower spectrum of activity. Penicillin G, benzathine, and uh, penicillin G, procaine, are suspensions of penicillin G that prolong its half life, allowing a reduced frequency of injections. Uh, probenicide, a uricosteric agent that blocks renal secretion of penicillin is used for this purpose, but only rarely. So what is uricosteric agent? So these are the agents that would reduce quantity of uric acid into your body, right? It means that the people who are suffering from gout syndrome, they would be using it, right? Okay. So penicillin A is resistant penicillin are used predominantly for penicillin A's produ producing staphylococcal infections. The use of these agents, which are administered orally, is declined due to increased incidence of methicillin-resistant SRS, which is also called MRSA, that also confers resistance to cephalosporins. Then we have extended spectrum penicillin. By the way, if uh, the session would be off, so you have to log in back, okay? All right. So extended spectrum penicillins are inactivated by beta lactamase. These agents have a broadened gram-negative coverage. Resistance has become a common problem. Uh, ampicillin is useful for infections caused by Haemophilus influenza, streptococcus, pneumonia, streptococcus pyrogenes, and Neisseria uh, meningitis, Proteus mirabilis, and Enterococcus facilis. So um, uh, amoxicillin is similar to ampicillin, but has a better oral absorption. Amoxicillin is used commonly for endocarditis prophylaxis before major procedures. Endocarditis is uh, inflammation of the inner layer of the heart, right? Okay. Then we have piperacillin has a good activity against Pseudomonas species and Enterobacter species. Then we have the very, very, very famous, right? Uh, Clovenic acid. So it is structurally related to penicillin, but has no antimicrobial antimicrobial properties on its own. So why do we use it? If you remember in augmentin, you have this acid attached, right? Along with uh, the penicillin, right? Uh, amoxicillin, sorry, right? So why do we use it? We use it because it irreversibly inhibits beta lactamase, okay? So its job is not to produce any antibacterial infection, but since it's doing a wonderful job, in stopping the beta lactamase, okay? So we would love to have this in our antibiotic. When administered with penicillin, flavonic acid exposes penicillinase producing organisms to therapeutic concentrations of penicillin. Flavonic acid is used in combination products that is augmentin and dementin, right? For oral and parenteral administration respectively. Uh, then we have sulbactam and tazobactam. So these are beta lactamase inhibitors structurally related to penicillin. So sulbactam is marketed in the combination product uh, that is ampicillin and sulbactam. And tazobactam is used in combination with uh, piperacillin under the name docin. So ampicillin and sulbactam is used parenterally and provides coverage similar to that provided by uh, amoxicillin and clavonic acid. It is most commonly used for gram-negative bacteria as well as most anaerobes. 
So piperacillin tazobactam is effective against most gram-negative organisms, including Pseudomonas species. So the adverse effect is the penicillin causes hypersensitivity reaction in nearly 10% of the patients. All types of reaction from a simple rash to anaphylaxis can be observed within two minutes or up to three days following administration. Other adverse effects result from direct irritation or pain on uh, injection, GI upset or super infection. So super infection is this that already you were infected and you get infected by some other microbe as well, right? So that is super infection that you have two kinds of infection at the same time. Okay, then we'll talk about endocarditis prophylaxis, right, for which we are using it. So endocarditis prophylaxis is indicated for patients with prostatic heart valves. Those who have previously been diagnosed with endocarditis, patients born with cyanotic heart disease and patients with surgically constructed systemic pulmonary shunts. So patients with intermediate risk for endocarditis are those who were born with other congenital heart abnormalities, those with acquired valvular dysfunction and patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Endocarditis prophylaxis is recommended, recommended for the above patients who are planning to undergo major dental procedure. So procedures involving their respiratory tracts such as bronchoscopy or uh, tonsillectomy uh, and operations and procedures involving the GI and uh, genital urinary tracts. Agents most commonly used for endocarditis uh, prophylaxis are amoxicillin or ampicillin. Those who are allergic to penicillin can take uh, uh, clindamycin or azithromycin. I would recommend that before we start cephalosporin, I would end this meeting and I will restart it and you all join. Okay?